Hey everyone, this is Victor from Growth Evolution Development Ground, gdground.com. In today's video, I want to talk to you about the popular concept of working hard versus working smart. Now, any entrepreneur out there knows that in order to achieve something big of you know significance and meaning, you really have to work your ass off to make it happen. If you don't work your ass off to make it happen, you won't achieve it. It's just as simple as that. You you can do a certain amount of work, but your results also be, will be like this. So it's a it's a common idea. Everybody knows that you have to work hard. So if a marketer comes and tells you that, well, our program allows you to do nothing and achieve and you know earn millions don't believe them they're lying to you they're just you know they're they're finding ways to lure you in into their uh, system so to say now that being said people often get caught up into the idea that if they work hard and they work for long enough they will achieve everything they desire in their life absolutely everything and and they will make it big and that's what many people think and that's what I used to think and this is not exactly true it's not a bad you know way to think but it's not exactly true and that's because working smart and working hard is actually a big difference now what do I mean by well, working hard and working smart. What What is really the difference? Well, the thing is, if you talk, look at a little bit about my experience and uh, when I started an online business, I knew nothing about anything related to the internet world and how to uh, stand out there and do things. And so everything was a learning curve. And I, and for the first year of my, well, business, I worked really, really hard. I just spent like 100% of my free time working. I didn't go out. I met almost no friends. I hardly even spoke to my uh, parents. Uh, I just simply had no time. But don't think that this is a, you know, depressing or I'm discouraging you from entrepreneurship and that I'm making it sound all bad. Well, not no, not at all because I actually was enjoying all of the work because everything was new. Of course, there was a lot of stress, but there was also a lot of excitement. So I kept myself busy and I was just really having fun doing all this work, making a buttload of mistakes, but also solving them. And that's, and that's a part of any kind of business you do. So I was working really hard for the first year. And then what happened was that I became used to doing the things that I was doing. I kind of learned my way around and they weren't really all that new. And I didn't need to spend that much time on doing them anymore. But I, uh, I didn't realize it then at that moment yet. I wasn't aware enough of all the situation. So I just kept working hard. And I figured, I, I kind of came to this realization that if I'm not working hard, if I find myself that in the middle of the week suddenly I can relax and do nothing for a couple of hours, I, feel, I would feel guilty. I, I, would, I just would feel guilty and feel bad about myself. I'd think like, well, what am I doing? If I'm not doing anything, I'm probably slacking. That's why I'm not making any progress. Because three months ago, I wouldn't have allowed myself this. Well, the reality is that I've already gotten accustomed to doing these things. I've learned these things. I've already solved the first stages of whatever I was doing. And I wasn't at that stage anymore. So I didn't have to put all of that time into it. If I would start something new, of course, that again would require um, a lot of work. So if you put it into a nutshell, I was basically addicted to working hard and I didn't anymore see uh, what I was doing. I was just doing it all the time for the sake of doing it. It's not a very uh, nice way to live when you're just working for the sake of work, but it happens. It happens when you're uh, passionate. It happens when you're... Uh, trying to be successful and um, when you have a vision for the things you're doing so it's okay it's not a good way it's not the best way but it's okay and as long as you are aware at some point like I became aware that you're just working hard without really the need to work hard then uh, then you're you know in a good place so uh, what I realized that I was spending a lot of time on tasks that I really didn't need to do anymore. For example, I, 
I, like I said in the beginning, there was a learning curve and I needed to do them then and I needed to learn my way around. For example, uh, there was some taxation, you know, papers that I had to understand. And I've already, you know, started a company. I, I, uh, I know how some of this stuff works. Of course, there's a lot to learn, but the basics, what I need at the moment, I have them settled. And I keep pushing myself into rereading the same stuff, although I know it already. I keep pushing myself into reading other areas that I have. I don't need to learn at the moment. They have nothing to do with what I'm doing. Yet I'm just, you know, I'm so addicted to learning something new that I'm actually learning things that are not even useful to me anymore. As a matter of fact, I, you know, my brain, it, I feel like it's overpacked sometimes with information and it's good to let go of things you don't need to do and that's exactly what I wasn't doing I was just feeding my brain all the time with information that wasn't even relevant so that was the first thing what I noticed the other thing is what I noticed is that um, I would do certain tasks and then I would get carried away and a task would supposed to was supposed to be so productive for like two hours I had you know time to do it and then after the two hours I noticed that I haven't actually done anything i was working but i wasn't really working as an example is you know i'm doing amazon research so i sell on amazon and every once in a while i have to do some research to figure out what product am i going to sell next i'll be honest with you it's not the most exciting process out there and uh I feel because it's not my first product anymore not my second product i feel like i don't need to be that much into it. So what happens is that I start research, researching a product and then I find myself just browsing the catalog for products that are interesting to me that I would that I end up potentially, you know, buying. So I spend my time working but also not working at the same time. And this started to become a habit. More and more of this I would do. And uh, finally, one thing that I really I don't like to admit, but because I used to I do also now preach against against it i preach that don't sit too much on social networks they're such a uh, you know they kill your motivation they kill your e efficiency and yet i ended up uh i would need to do something on my social networks maybe related to this blog and i just ended up sitting and reading p people's tweets people's images and talking to friends and again i would need to work hard I would need to do something really smart that day because this work did require my time but I just ended up spending my whole day doing something else well not the whole day but the time that I put in for doing that task so there were many things that I, were, I was coming to realize that I was doing wrong and the reason for this was because I wasn't in so much stress anymore to go and do them. So before, if I had negative motivation pushing me so hard to get out of a bad place, now that I'm not in a bad place anymore, I don't feel like I need to do this much work, but I'm still addicted to doing this work. And so I end up doing things that are not really effective. So I'm uh, sometimes working hard, sometimes working not so hard, but I'm not in most of the time working smart. And so, Coming back to working smart, what is working smart and what do you need to do to, to really work smart and not work hard? Because like I said, in the end of the day, it's a big game changer. You have to work really hard if you want to be successful, if you want to achieve your dreams, your goals, if you want to you know, come closer towards your vision. But you don't need to do this all the time and forever. There are certain times and periods in your business creation when you have to work really hard because just some tasks that you don't know yet how to do, they require you to do them so that you could learn. And then once you do learn them, you could either do less of them if they become easier or ask someone else to do them for you. So basically to uh, work for you. So the first thing that you could do if you're uh, looking into the idea of you know, working smart is to look at your KPIs, which, are the, which is a concept that businesses use and which means uh, key performance indicators. And look at the things that are really helping you progress in your business towards becoming bigger and towards having more success. And try to get rid of those things that are not um, that are not your key performance indicators. And what I mean here is that, for example, uh, you're 
uh, you're looking for, I'll take my example because uh, I do the Amazon business and you can be looking every day at your statistics. What the hell? You can even be looking every hour at your statistics thinking, well, am I doing good? Am I doing bad? And then making these um, unnecessary movements, trying to fix something when it's not really needed. And this is not a key performance indicator. Your key performance indicator, if you want to grow your business, is making quality product research because the more quality products you have, the more online there, the more sales you'll have, and that means a better business. That's your key performance indicator, your uh, research of products and your um, the way you build your listing on Amazon. That's what, uh, that's what helps you build uh, your business. If you're a blogger, it's content creation. It's not about tweaking this little plug in here and tweaking that little plug in there because most of this thing, these things are just cosmetic. You don't really need to do them all the time. And some people are addicted to making little changes on their websites and blogs. So just find out what your key performance indicators are and start doing the most more of those or tr start focusing on those and do them carefully. But I'll talk about a little bit more about that soon of how to actually uh, be more careful and smart about the key process, performance indicators and how to deal with the performance indicators that are not your key, your key, <laughs> key performance indicators, but are still required in your business. So the second thing is that, of course, you need to set times and goals. Set weekly goals, set day goals. I repeat this, if not on every video, maybe on my sec every second video, that you have to have goals, daily goals, weekly goals. You have to have something you're looking to do. And don't put there everything, like brushing your teeth, you know, um, saying hello in Facebook. Put goals that are really meaningful, ideally like three to six goals maybe. And that at least two of them are good big goals that require some time. And set also times for yourself. This is one of the biggest reasons why I started slacking off with my hard work is because I started to, uh, I needed to do less work, but I kept the same time limits. For example, I spent the same three hours doing something. And so I would do the work in half an hour and then spend two and a half hours just doing nothing. But that time, so to say, is still going to, for that, uh, for that work. So um, what's also important is that when you have a time limit for yourself, you can work hard during that time limit and when it ends, you can relax. A really famous approach is the Pomodoro timer approach where you work, I think, for 50 minutes and then you have a 5 or 10 minute break and then again 50 minutes. And for those 50 minutes, you do nothing other than focusing on the task that you're doing at that moment. And then you have that break where you really do break and then you start again. And this is what pro has proven over time for people to be the most effective. So I really encourage you to look into that and set time limits for yourself, set goals. Because when we stop creating times and goals, we don't have any boundaries. And that's when we go free and doing whatever we want to. And that's what we don't want to do when we're looking to work smart. Um, Number three is invest in certain maybe applications online. There are a bunch of application software out there that can help you help your business grow that can really ease your life. And regardless of what business you do, there is a gazillion different softwares out there that can, you know, do all kind of stuff for you and just Google around, search it and look for something that's that can help you. Don't be cheap on these things because um, I know it doesn't feel good to spend money on things that are not, you don't necessarily need to spend money on, but believe me, when you get rid of that extra work, which is easy, but a lot of it, you actually free up your not only time, but your mind. And when you free up your mind, you're able to, uh, again, increase the efficiency and the effectiveness of your key performance indicators. So look around, look into what you can invest and maybe something can really be a game changer for you. Uh, number four, invest in a virtual assistant. And the virtual assistant, unlike an employee, is different because they're virtual. You just t tell them what you do, they do, and they work for a project to help you w for a project that you have, or they work for a certain amount of hours a day or a week. And they're super, they're super cheap and super helpful for your business because you can give them really simple tasks. If you're a blogger, they can take care of your um, social networks for you, for example. If you're doing an Amazon business, they can create VAT invoices for your customers that ask them. They can do all kinds of simple things that are little but take your time. 
they're um, they're kind of like the previous point with the software, except they're actual people who uh, are more diverse, who can do more things, different things, and uh, so I highly encourage you to also look into a BA if you feel like you're um, you have too much work and you're working hard and you want to focus on those key performance indicators, then you can look or a VA and give that VA the tasks that are really monotonous, that are easy to accomplish, but are necessary for you to do. They're not building your business, but they're helping your business to stay, you know, to float basically. And that can be given to a VA. And uh, yeah, I, I can't stress this enough. Uh, and the last but not least is eat that frog. And this is a very famous uh, phrase, which is I think Mark Twain started it and basically said that uh, eat that if you eat that frog, live frog, first thing in the morning, you'll have a feeling of satisfaction that you did it in the morning and you've gotten over it. And the idea is that it means that you're doing the hardest thing first. So if you have some task that you need to do, just focus it on the first thing in the morning because if you're doing it in the evening, you're most likely tired and you're not going to be as effectively doing it. You're not going to do it as well as you would in the morning. So when you're still fresh, when you still have the energy, capacity to think straight, do it first thing in the morning and you know take the easier tasks last. And so again, this is a good way to work smart. Uh, instead of working hard. So you focus on the most challenging things first. And also one other technique that I've uh, come across recently, super simple, but I've never actually um, thought about it before. And that was one reason why I was working hard, but not smart is that if you're not ready to do something at a certain moment is then don't even try doing it partially. Do it when you're ready to do it. An example in my life that I all the time apply is checking emails, right? You can you have a lot of stuff coming in, a lot of important emails related to whatever in your business. And if you don't have the moment right now to answer them, don't even read them. Don't don't fill in your brain with unnecessary information. Don't even open your email application because sometimes I can see an email pop by and I see the topic and I'm like, ah, oh, I know I need to do this and then but I don't have the time now and then I spend like the next three hours thinking about how I'm going to be doing it. Uh, and that's not good. So if you're not ready to do something, then don't do it at this moment. Do it a little later. Do it when you're ready to do it. And so, and also don't mix <laughs> work with leisure. Don't sit with, on social networks when you're working. Do work when you're working and have fun when you're having fun. This is a more complete way to live life. And when you're focused on, on work, when you're focused only on work, when you're in the working mindset, that is when smart work is possible. That's the state of flow. That's when it's possible. When you're just zoned out or like you're focused and you're just doing what you need to do and you're having the best result, as opposed to you being all over the place and not really, you know, thinking about the things you should be thinking. So these were all of the things that I wanted to share with you today. Hopefully you found them useful. If you have another uh, thing you want to add that uh, maybe something I left out that can help people work smart, of course, you can always leave it in the comment section below. Uh, this way, other people can also see it and add to this list that I just mentioned. If you've liked the video, please hit the thumbs up for me and subscribe for more similar content in the future. And I hope to see you in the next video.